These are the components that I use to build my vortex cooling tube, uh, vortex chamber, which I guess is the business end where everything happens. What I'm using is one inch PVC tubing. Uh, it's outer diameter one inch, actually a little bit over one inch. The outer diameter isn't as important as the inner diameter. And there's certain ratios you should follow. And you can go to my blog and see what those are, some rule of thumb guidelines. But this is one inch outer diameter. I have a one inch coupling, which allows these two pieces to be connected together. One side of this is going to be the hot tube, the other side is going to be the cold tube. And you probably want to use longer pieces to start with. That way you can cut them back and tinker with it to get different cold and different hot temperatures. Changing materials might also make a difference. I just use PVC tube because it's easy to work with. So this coupling fits inside this reducing fitting. This reducing fitting fits inside this coupling. These are all tapered snug fits that you would glue together with the PVC glue. The last thing, I have a piece of plastic over here which can be anything. This is what I'm going to make the, uh, the cold plate out of. I'm going to have to drill a hole in it and cut it. As I mentioned, all these pieces fit together really snug because they're tapered fitting and you can't actually put one piece all the way through the other piece. This pipe won't go all the way through this fitting because it's tapered and because there's a ridge in there. We've got to get rid of that. Another important thing is that these two pieces, when you cut them, the cut should be clean and they should be perpendicular to the center of the tube so that these can butt up together and form a seal. Which is what we're going to have to do is file out the inside of this fitting, this coupling, file out the ridge, file out the taper to a point where this will slide all the way through the inside of this fitting. And these two pieces will come together and butt up against each other inside there. Once we've done that, we have to cut these reducing fittings and do the same thing so that this coupling will slide completely through this fitting. Fortunately, we don't want the entire reducing fitting in length. We're going to cut it this way so we have a small sliver. A small sliver of this one and a small sliver of this one will fit on the ends of this coupling. Then the whole thing will slide into here. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is take the, the coupling for the one inch PVC pipe or whatever size you're using. This is a coupling that this fits into, the pipe fits into. Clamp it in a vise or whatever you got. Take a file, file out the insides, file out the little ridge in there, file out the taper in there, and keep going around like that so you have a smooth fitting where the pipe can slide all the way through it like that. Because what we're going to do is put both the hot side and the cold side tubes together and they have to slide all the way into the middle and butt up against each other inside there. Once you've done that, take one of the reducing fittings that this coupling fits into Take the reducing fitting, put it into the larger coupling, push it in kind of snug, and get a pen and mark with a line around where it fits. Then take it apart. So now you got the reducing coupling with a line drawn on there. Then get your pen again and come down about a quarter three sixteenths of an inch or something and draw another line parallel to that one all the way around. Once you've done that, clamp it in your vise and cut across it both sides. So what you'll end up with is a round sliver like this. This comes out of here. The reason you do that is what we're going to do is with this sliver, 
this sliver fits snugly over the reducing fitting like that this reducing fitting accepts the pipe of course this sliver fits snugly inside this larger reducing fitting so what you end up with is when you glue all this together is you have a, a pipe within a pipe you got the larger reducing fitting on the outside the smaller reducing fitting in the middle and a space between the two around there so I'll take this other side cut it just like I did here and put it on this end so I'll have two of these then what I'm going to have to do is file the inside of this file out that little ridge in there file out the taper so that this thing with both little slivers of the reducing fittings on there can slide all the way through into the middle okay the next thing you want to do is take the larger fitting coupling clamp it in the vise get a file file out the inside so it's smooth get rid of the ridge in there get rid of the taper inside there you want to do that so that when you take your smaller coupling that has these pieces on it from the reducing couplings that fit on the ends like this that this whole thing will slide inside the larger coupling all the way through and again this area in here this void that's caused is where the air is going to go in of course this smaller coupling has been filed as well so that these tubes fit all the way through so the whole thing is going to go together with one tube on this end another tube on that end and then the larger coupling is going to go over the entire thing like that forming a void in this area obviously none of this has been glued together yet so once you got all that done take a thin piece of plastic and it doesn't matter what it is it can be even metal if you want it to be and cut out a round disc like this that you can barely see here and put a hole in it the diameter of the hole is proportional to the inner diameter of this tubing that you're using whatever size it is you can go to my blog and there's a chart in there a rule of thumb kind of thing that shows you what these ratios should be the ratio of this hole in this plate to the inner diameter of this tube this plate should be cut the outer diameter of this plate so that it's smaller than this than the tube that you're using for your hot and your cold tubes because what's going to happen is this plate sits on the end of this tube this gets shoved into this coupling so the plate's sitting flat inside there and then the other tube is going to come in from the other side and butt up against it capturing that plate right in the middle you can glue the whole thing together before you do that what I do is put some glue on there glue in one tube only about halfway into the middle once you've done that get some kind of measuring device like a pair of calipers and measure how far the end of that tube is inside there then come to the outside and put a mark so you know from the outside right where that tube ends then what you want to do is measure the thickness of this plate because the plate's going to sit on top of that put another mark that's to one side of the plate you don't want to be right in the middle of the plate you want to know where the edge of the plate is on that side you can verify it by measuring again but glue this tube in first so it doesn't move after you've made these marks because what we're going to do is drill holes into this coupling around here and you want those holes to be on one side of the plate not right in the, not through the center of the plate but on the one side of the plate 